So, while everybody is busy in the back uh, loading cargo and also the first officer walking around the aircraft, we are going to um, start setting up the FMC. And before we can do that, we need to do uh, also our ACARS link setup because uh, since the last update of the PMDG 747-400, uh, these guys decided to do us a favor and add more realism, uh, meaning they added ACARS functionality, so data link to the plane. Not that they really told me about it, so it took me some time to figure it out because I couldn't load any flight plans and some other things, some other aspects that didn't exactly work the way you would expect it. And uh, therefore, I show you now what to do in order to be successful and not uh, stumble around like me at the beginning. Um, there are three CDUs in this aircraft. So we've got the captain's one, we've got the first officer one, and we've got this middle one here, which is mainly used for setting things up and also for ACARS functionality. So if we look at uh, this here you can see now we have the m the menu and there's this ACARS menu and at the moment the only menu option that's available to us is the pre-flight all the other ones are not working and when you press pre-flight what you get is at the moment you get a perf init data not entered now that is a little bit misleading because it's not the perf init data it's lacking it's actually far more basic data that it uh, requests from us. So what I do now is um, I'm going in here and I'm going to start first of all with setting up the aircraft weight and fuel wise. Okay, so fuel wise uh, we are going to uh, we have calculated that we're going to take on 40.8 and I decided to take 42 tons of fuel. So I'm putting this in, and that will automatically load up the aircraft. There is no simulation of fuel slowly coming in. I don't know if you can turn that on, if that exists in the 747, uh, but we don't really need this. So we've got our fuel, our calculated fuel on. And uh, that also gives us here uh, zero fuel weight and gross weight, takeoff weight. Now the other thing you can do is the payload. Again, you see the same gross weight, maximum takeoff weight uh, values here, but uh, we still um, we haven't got the, the the cargo in. So, in order to do that, uh, what we would do is I would take the uh, zero fuel weight that we calculated, which is two six five point eight, and I can put that here into the zero fuel weight, weight field, 265.8. And it will automatically calculate for us the 305.78. That's slightly higher than the one that Zimbrief calculated. Reason is we added 42 instead of 40 point something tons of fuel. So uh, these are the roughly two tons more that I put in, not quite two tons. And it also spreads the cargo on the main deck and the forward and aft cargo and the bulk cargo so that we have a decent uh, center of gravity for takeoff which is 23.0% and that's basically it we don't have to do much more on this end so I'm going to the menu and then I'm going to the FMC page uh, forget about that nav data so we are in the 747-400 uh, that's our engine type the ARAC is slightly outdated couple of days uh, haven't yet put in the 1901 yet but that is not really relevant for us and uh, we're coming here to this initial page the um, the technicians have already aligned the aircraft for us but should you actually have to enter your data after IRS alignment uh, you should go to that third page and take one of the GPS receiver positions. Make just make sure that these show the same value, 
um, because uh, you see this last position I had cases where this was wrong where this just didn't match because we had moved and uh, therefore um, just make sure that you get a proper position and the one that we have here now is is the correct one let's enter the reference airport which is Seattle and uh, to tell you the truth I'm not quite sure what stand I'm on let's see if I can find it in the Navigraph charts um, what parking gate we are supposed to be on let's see Ah, this chart doesn't support it so you know what um, I don't really need it so uh, we'll just leave that out it's some parking gate on the north on the north cargo area let's go to the route and now it is important up to this update what you could do is you could go here you could uh, open up uh, your flight plans and then you could choose a flight plan and yeah and it would load it no not not like this anymore they have made this change uh, which prevents you from loading a flight plan because they now simulate a data link via a cars now don't get me wrong it's great that they do this and it's giving the kind of more realism factor but uh, yeah <laughs> it takes time to find out about it okay so it won't work like this so I show you what you have to do so that it does work before you can initiate a data link and log into the a cars you need to go and uh, go back here go to the route page and first enter your departure airport your arrival airport and also important your flight number it's these three fields that you need to enter in order to now go to that third FMC press on the pre-flight button and uh, start entering some data now I'm going to call it up as a window because it's a bit easier we are flight number 99 plan departure date uh, that's not quite right because the flight plan came from the 13th but we are on the 14th original originating is KSEA destination is PANC Anchorage the estimated time of departure is 2130 Zulu and the endurance the time that basically is planned for the trip time is zero two five zero at least that's why I understand as ETE the airline ID now I'm not sure what you have to enter there um, I don't know if it's no I, th I think it's a two it's a two letter code which is kind of an an a cars code I'm not sure if that's the correct one the ATC fl uh, flight ID is uh, PAC for Polar Air Cargo 99er uh, you can see that we are at 2032 at the moment fuel on board is 41.9 tons almost uh, 42 tons and the downlink is active so we are now basically um, we have initiated the data link yeah, you can see this here and you could also call for a status so it would give you status information about your flight um, the, the date why does it show 13th I don't really get it because that's actually not right well anyway um, not sure if other of these menus will come active later on in the flight we can check I haven't actually used this yet 
here in the 747-400. But that is what you need to do in order to go back to your other CDU and now um, go to the um, company route. So request 747. It has already filtered your flight plan and then say request. Now you can see request sending, so it simulates sending a data request. The request has been sent, now we have to wait. Very good, now we got route 1 uplink ready. You can clear this. We press the load. That means it has been, or it is loading the route. And uh, now that's the weird thing, it actually deletes the flight. Aha, now we are back. Okay, now it has put back in all the information and it also has put in our, our route with Ari as the first waypoint. Uh, runway, by the way, will be 3, 4 right. We can enter this already here. And uh, yeah, that's the quick way to get especially long routes uh, in here without having to enter them manually. Now this one wouldn't have been that bad. So what's missing is our departure information. For that uh, I can refer to my flight plan again. So the departure is going to go via the runway 34 right, which we had already selected. It's the Bangor 9 and we are going via Ari. Okay, and if we go back to root, and we go down to the page, we see now our initial thing, that's the departure route and the departure transition via ARI to ARI and then direct FOSH and so on. Because we already know uh, the arrival in Anchorage, at least for the moment, uh, we are going to select runway 33, for which there is only an RNAV approach, as we've seen in our briefing. Yeska 6, Juliet Oscar Hotel transition and Hopper for the RNAV 33 transition. Okay, so that's what this looks like. But you see there is now a discontinuity, a discontinuity that I will clear up. And I am still a little bit wondering why we haven't aligned yet. Yeah, okay, alignment takes a long time. Well, I would have expected that we are already at least close to alignment. Anyway, um, so here's, here's our route and when we scroll down we see that there is Yeska and then TED. Then comes a discontinuity for ATC to, to route us and then we continue Hopper. Now I can show you the arrival here in in uh, Anchorage again. So the arrival route basically brings us from Judit Oscar Hotel to Yeska and then the general routing is to go to the TED VOR. Now that isn't really very helpful because the approach that we have uh, has us go to Hopper so if we would first fly to TED, we'd have to go all the way back to Hopper um, at 8000 and then do all this merry go around here. And that's not what we want. So uh, what I'm going to do for the moment is, uh, I don't know what uh, Pro ATC X is going to do. I would take the Hopper and I will put Hopper in the place of TED which gives us a direct routing from Yeska to Hopper, um, continuing uh, along also these altitude constraints. So I'm going to activate this route. And once you've activated it, you will get this here, the wind data uplink ready. What happens is if you have Active Sky, Active Sky creates a file with uh, wind data for every s individual 
um, waypoint here and you can uh, load this by going to RTE root data and then you say wind data load it will send an ACAS request it has sent it now the uplink is ready has it done it now yes okay and now you see for every waypoint uh, for every waypoint along the route you can now um, pull some wind information and we are going to fly on 340 so we are somewhere between 161 162 14 to 17 knots somewhere in that area so the, the winds are pretty homogeneous here over the various flight levels and the temperature at 330 is minus 56 degrees we do execute and that will help the FMC to calculate our route much more closely since we aren't aligned yet at least that's the way it looks um, we still can't finish our setup completely but we can continue at least to the performance setup so what I'm going to do next is um, what does that do by the way company report sending mm -hmm. anyway performance in it um, in the dash 8 I think you can request all the data was that in a triple seven here we need to actually do it manually so I'm activating the gross weight here which already has been pre-filled and we're going to put in a reserve of four tons our cost index according to our flight plan is 25 and our cruise altitude according to the flight plan is 340 that finishes the performance in it page next is the thrust limit um, the outside temperature is 10 degrees uh, I've been using TopCut to do some calculations here so um, would be able to use a 59 degrees D rating with 95% um, and I think I'm going to use this so I'm going to put in 59 it gives us 97.2% N1 here on the takeoff and then for the takeoff itself uh, we're going to use flaps 20 and uh, yeah now I think w something is missing my guess is it's uh, the fact that we're not yet aligned so I'm going to leave the um, I'm going to leave the V speeds uh, for a moment because I'm pretty sure that this can be calculated here, but my guess is because we aren't aligned yet, we're still waiting for alignment. Um, I think we might not be able to get our v speeds yet um, let's see where is the status page i think it's the status page where the alignment no where does it show the alignment here good question hmm so why are we not aligned we are enough, so we should be in the process of aligning. But I guess uh, that uh, has to wait. We're going to do this uh, later on then. And uh, But we are basically through now. So if we go on the progress page, what we can see is that um, we're going to arrive in anchorage with about 14.5 tons of remaining fuel which is fine uh, top cut has been a little bit 
more conservative with a few calculation. Um, so let me see. So 42, yeah. So basically, what this calculates here is what Simbrief has calculated plus my two tons of additional fuel. So that's good. That's pretty accurate then, Simbrief. Uh, top cut, I'm afraid, uh, seems to have calculations that are based on the old um, 747, 400s of PMDG, and they do not entirely match anymore. Yeah. Okay, so we can check the hydraulics here as well. They look good. Um, the APU is not running yet. Oxygen is fine. And the batteries look look fine as well. Okay, that's it. Uh, that's the setup here of the FMC. Um, now we're going through all the other pre-flight activities uh, and slowly but surely uh, wait for the first officer to come back from the walk around and then we're going to make the pre-flight uh, setups and uh, get ATC clearances just to confirm and and hopefully all the loading of the cargo will be done in time so that we can leave uh, on time uh, for an on-time departure. So here we are now um, doing our uh, walk around here around the aircraft and uh, we're going to just check that everything is in order, that everything on the plane is as it should be and uh, there are certain points uh, where we will look a bit more closely, that is uh, the pitot tubes, for example, as far as we can from below here, and also things like uh, the uh, the wheels, this the state of the whole gears and of the engines, just making sure that there are no dense holes or anything like that. Um, yeah, and so we'll start to walk around here the aircraft, which will take some time. So the first thing we check that, uh, as far as we can see, the pitot tubes are still in one piece and that there's no obvious obstructions. Uh, we, we cannot really check the state because we would need a ladder uh, to climb up there and, and check the actual state of the, of the tubes. But I think uh, it looks uh, pretty much okay. So next next thing we check is the state of the gear so we'll have a quick look here at uh, the oops inside of the wheel yeah I mean that looks pretty much okay and we also check down here um, check the state of the tire they look uh, pretty much okay and uh, that's some artifact here from um, from the outside elements. There is unfortunately some problem with the avatar mode that I'm using here, which is a pity because um, you, you get some strange uh, perspectives of external objects versus the plane. Um, so the avatar mode is something that we do not have in X-Plane. This is prepared uh, only. And it is actually quite nice, but it does not work if your aircraft is uh, surrounded by other objects. Uh, because it's not able to properly uh, display them and you see this black wire here um, kind of lying around as an artifact uh, which doesn't look like it when we are outside the avatar mode. It's just one of the things. Anyway, um, we're usually going to also check the state of the brakes but uh, it's not modeled as as precisely here as it, it would be in the, in the real aircraft so we do not have the usual means of uh, checking how good or how bad our brake pads still are. So I have asked uh, <coughs> the pilot inside the cockpit to turn on the taxi lights and we can see that all the lights including the runway turn off lights are actually working. So we can turn that off again. Now we continue towards the wing. Um, we also look at these uh, uh, air inlets or outlets. I think here the the air is coming in, and it will be left out then at the rear of the aircraft 
if I remember correctly. So that looks fine. Next thing uh, we're going to look at is uh, the wing itself. And we can also ask for the landing lights to be put on. And it looks like they are working fine. I'm also quickly checking the beacon. Get the beacon turned on. So we should be... We should actually be seeing some beacon lights. Okay, well that does not work. <laughs> Probably my switch is programmed wrong. Um, oh, there it is. Uh, it just took a moment. That's interesting. Here we go. So beacon is working. can turn this off again. Uh, if we would be in the dark now, I would also turn on the the uh, um, the wing lights is to help us uh, see a bit more of the wing because these are lights that would actually um, illuminate the wing but uh, as we are during the day that's not necessary and uh, the other thing we are going to test also is the strobes so I've turned them on for the moment um, I'm also going to check the leading edge here of the wing, that there is no visual damage. And, oops, in this avatar mode it's not always easy to navigate. So, let's see. Let's climb up a little bit and just have a look here. Well, looks like there is no obvious problem with the engine. <laughs> um, then we continue to check front of the, the wing and also the bottom of the wing if there is anything visible, any damage. And we can see here that's the, the next engine um, and it's quite high. So if, if we would need to inspect this more closely we would probably need to almost climb up a little bit. Looks fine. Um, that's the rest of the wing. Again, everything looks uh, pretty okay. And our nav light, this is the green nav light to our right. And there's also the strobe light, which is working fine. Now I'm also going to check that there are no obvious damages to the rear of the wing. That's looking fine. Okay. And uh, now we're continuing towards the back. So you're going to see some movement of the rudder. That's because uh, uh, I use a joystick here uh, in order to move and in avatar mode. Now this thing, this contraption here is uh, to prevent the aircraft from tilting towards the back especially when the aircraft is still empty and some heavy heavy load is to be loaded um, if towards the rear of the aircraft in order to prevent this from tilting down which can happen uh, we have this uh, stopper here <laughs> which can be put up now you can start to load the aircraft in a way that would prevent this from happening and you can also see when we are on the other side that the, the cargo door is actually towards the center uh, of gravity of the aircraft. And therefore, if you load something there and then you bring it forward immediately, or if you load it from the nose, um, there should be as much of a problem. But it needs to be something that is planned in order to uh, be correct. So there's also this... Uh, that's the outlet for uh, for the air. Uh, we just check that there's no obvious obstruction and nothing nesting or <laughs> or inhabiting it. If the APU would be running, we would already hear some really loud noises. At the moment, we don't have any hydraulic pumps. Uh, we just have the electric power from the external GPU. This is the other side here. Okay, we also checked that there are no obvious damages due to some tail strike that might have happened uh, before. 
looking all good. Yeah, that's the, the rear door, which is currently closed. And when we look very close, we can see that uh, the textures aren't as sharp as you would expect it. Um, that is because I have uh, tuned down to 2K textures in order to keep up the performance. Um, yeah. Now the inspection that I've done, um, I've done it with an good weather because uh, I, I wanted to prevent having some really bad weather. Okay. Now the other thing that you would do normally is you would check the back of the engine. Here you can see the artifact with the avatar mode. It's not working perfectly, but again I'm going through here and. Yes, something we haven't done on the other side, uh, but consider it done is basically we haven't checked the, we have not checked the wheels, but they are okay. Uh, normally you would also check also every single wheel, and you would uh, also make sure that the brake pads with the little there's a little t testing device uh, that we can't see here, and we would also check that there's nothing in the wheel wells. Uh, to cause some kind of problem and as I say there are some artifacts here with external objects in the avatar mode y What you also would do is you would normally look in the back of the engine not only in the front So you would also check here that there's nothing No damage visible uh, by the way. We also would be looking for stains on the ground which might indicate that some oil or fuel or something is uh, dripping Obviously, we don't want that to happen uh, during our flight because that could be a sign for some more serious problem. Um, yeah, again, you can see this strange, strange effect here. And again, we check the the other engine, and we check the wing in order to make sure that uh, there's nothing there and we also check the light again that means we are going to look for the red light of the nav of the navigation light position light and the flash of the strobes which is working you can turn off the strobes now Okay, then again, we check the engine, drippages, damages, anything like that. Check the rest of the wing, there's nothing weird and wonderful. You can see now that the fueling, though, so there's some panels open here, and uh, the fuel hose is uh, connected. This is the GPU, by the way, the external ground power unit. Same here with the engine, then we check the rest of the wheel, we check that our landing lights, um, they work fine. We have two sets um, left and right and each of them consists of two individual lights that you can also switch individually. So, so we've checked them so we can turn them off and uh, so we leave it now with the nav lights on in order to indicate that the aircraft is uh, inhabited. <laughs> uh, later on when we get ready for turning on the APU and pushing back and all that we're going to turn on those strobe lights, the red uh, flashing lights that we've seen okay so that the ground crew knows we are getting ready to um, bring the aircraft under power and make sure that everybody is out of the way. Now you can see here this this is re looks really strange. I'm going to go out of the of the avatar mode now and uh, yeah there you go. So this is uh, what we just walked around. Now in this mode which is the normal mode everything is fine. The other thing that you may have realized is that in avatar mode you can hear um, the inside of the aircraft 
whereas now we are really on the outside, identifiable on the outside, and you hear uh, only the, the ground power unit and, I don't know, maybe the fuel pump unit or something like that. So that's some, let's say, not so perfect implementation of this avatar mode. Uh, it doesn't really work 100% still. It is practical to be able to walk around the aircraft, although it looks a bit odd and it sounds a bit odd. Yeah. Anyway, that was our walk around, usually done by the pilot uh, not flying, I think. Um, and in this case, it's supposed to be our first officer that uh, does it. Um, but I performed it for you to watch it. Papa Alpha November Charlie via the Bravo Alpha November Golf Romeo Niner departure route and then as filed climate maintain 8000 expect flight level 340 within 10 minutes after departure departure frequency is 119.2 squawk 1671 altimeter 29.98 cleared via the Bravo Alpha November Golf Romeo Niner climb to 8000 expect flight level 340 within 10 minutes after departure departure frequency 119.2 So, as I told you before, uh, the reason why we didn't uh, get the V speeds was that we actually hadn't had alignment yet. In the meantime, uh, although it took quite some time, the alignment has taken place. And uh, as soon as uh, that was the case, I could see the V speeds come up here. Uh, and you need to press the buttons in order to activate them. So there are small numbers, and you make them larger numbers by clicking on the line selection key here just beside them. So for our flight, we're going to have 142 knots V1. That's the speed when uh, where we cannot stop on the runway anymore. We need to uh, continue. The rotation speed is 151 and V2 is 160 knots. Uh, V2 is the speed with which we will climb out. And uh, we can also quickly go to the legs and step through the legs page, uh, which will show you the current flight plan. So we can see that we are here in Seattle. We are going to fly north via Dot V and Mural, um, and then Bangor. And then from Bangor, we are going to take the ARI transition. If you remember, Fosh, Price, Bravo Kilo Alpha, Lair, Juliet Oscar Hotel. And now it becomes convoluted because this is the, uh, the famous arrival in, in Anchorage, which we're going to step through now, Jaska. Then uh, I directly went to Hopper. Tavu, Salni, and now you can see how we do this interesting circle here, uh, during which we also go into descent. This is an Arnav approach, and then we are aligning ourselves with the runway. And in case of missed approach, we continue to Mars and Bravo Golf Oscar, and at Bravo Golf Oscar, we are going to go into a hold, no, sorry, Bravo Golf Quebec, and we're going into a hold at 4,000 feet, waiting for ATC to give us instructions, in the unlikely event that we need to go around. Okay, so that's that. That finishes uh, the FMC setup for good. Uh, we are ready to leave, at least when it comes to the flight management. Before start checklist. Before start checklist. Supernumerary signs. Auto. MCP. V2 is 160. Heading track 344. Four. Altitude 8000. Takeoff speeds. V1 is 142. VR 151. V2 is 160. CDU preflight. Completed. Completed. Trim.
6.0 unit set, 0 and 0. Taxi and takeoff briefing. Completed. Beacon, both. Before start checklist complete. Are you ready for the departure brief? Go ahead. Okay, it's going to be a standard push back and start off the stand. Taxi route will be assigned by ATC. It'll be a left seat takeoff using an assumed temperature. Planning a flaps 20 takeoff. Nacelle anti-ice will be on. We are under our maximum landing weight, so we're okay to make an immediate return. Okay, all going well. The departure routing will be via the ATC assigned SID, complying with all published speed and altitude restrictions. No noise abatement procedures required. Any questions, comments, or concerns? I'm good. Departure brief complete. for push and start, tail to the right. Copy that, ready for push, tail right. Police break, break, please. Brakes released. Start sequence is four and three, then two and one. Check. Start engines four and three. Start engines two and one. for taxi procedure. Okay.
Flaps 20, please. Flaps 20. Before taxi checklist, please. Before taxi checklist, anti-ice, auto, recall, checked, auto brake, RTO, flight controls. Checked. Ground equipment. Clear. Clear. Before taxi checklist complete. 